I'm Robin Hoffman. I'm a public artist here in Charlottesville, and some people want to know what is a public artist. Well, a public artist can be somebody who just walks into a brewery and wonders, first of all, what is this mystique? What is this ambiance? What is this aesthetic that somebody's trying to express? And maybe I can even show or display one of my paintings here. Um, because it looks sort of America, Americanized, or there's an American component or a pa patriotic component to it. Oh, hello, hi. Hi. I'm Robin Hoffman. How, who are you? Steve Gibbs. Steve Gibbs. And so, who are you? Um, I'm the uh, owner of Civilian Brewery here in uh, Midtown Charlottesville. Awesome. This is so great to meet you, and what a surprise. <laughs> So, um, here you are, and you've donated to Wounded Warriors today, and so I'm so honored to meet with you. And is it that you have the patriotic flair to this decor? Uh, is there a reason behind that? Yeah, I am an Army veteran of our fine country. Thank you, uh, sir. Yeah, so it's a bit of a play on words. I went from soldier to civilian. And the bar is red, the walls are white, and the ceiling's blue. And we have 50 light bulbs hanging. So Wounded Warrior in particular means a lot to me, um, you know, for my service to the country. So it means something for me to give a little bit back. Well, thank you so much. And so what I love about this spot, by the way, is that you can actually see over to Amtrak and you know you're right by the bridge it's got a wonderful sort of view like if you're sitting here and you're you know doing your computer and just just hanging out it's just I know I'm not from Charlottesville since 2006 I'm from actually I, I really like you know Canada for the summers and Portland Oregon or Portland Maine or you know, uh, Martha's Vineyard. This has that feeling. Yeah. You know, the big picture window, kind of like outside, kind of just like mosey on in and, mm -hmm. you know, really hang out, that sort of thing. I jokingly call this area the, the unibrow of Charlottesville where everything comes together. Yeah. And that is awesome. Yeah. See, nobody's ever said that to me. That is awesome. Yeah. So, but I did notice that you also have, first of all, you have um, sayings. And how did that, how did that happen? Well, with the patriotic theme in mind, I wanted to, uh, you know, put up Lincoln and most notably the uh, Jefferson, as well as uh, Ben Franklin, so all the founding fathers and presidents of the United States, and figured it would, um, as long as they're, you know, talking about beer, it made sense for a brewery, so um, just trying to stay with the patriotic theme. Awesome. And these, this is artwork? Is this local artwork? Yeah, so we try to keep things as local as possible here. Um, so this is uh, local artwork that we, you know, change out so often. Um, this is Lee Alter, who's on oh, right now. Oh yeah! Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness! Awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, she's been up for for quite a bit at this point. Wow. Um, yeah, she has some pretty pretty cool stuff. Yeah, portraiture. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. Figure, they call this figurative art. Are you also uh, do you express yourself through music or art or anything like that? Um, not really. I stay pretty active here in the brewery, so yeah, I don't really uh, get too much time for that. But your I'm a pilot. Passion? Oh, <laughs> so I do get to uh, oh enjoy myself in that wow. aspect, in that regard. Yeah. Uh huh. Awesome. Wow, that's so awesome. So okay. So and then, how did you? I know I'm the artist, so I, I mean I like to know everything. But how did you, for instance, get the artist here? Like who you connect with? Charlottesville is pretty interesting. Most of the time I just uh, keep the door open and you never know who comes in. So I uh, talk to a couple of the local um, places that hang uh, local artwork and just kind of pick their brain on how they get a hold of these folks. And some people have walked in and otherwise I've just kind of went out of my way to seek, uh, seek out talent. So, awesome, yeah. awesome. And I just love the wood look. It feels so organic in here. Mm -hmm. So, and you even use like a stone um, facade for the bar. Yeah. So, yep. The s ceiling is probably what, what I get most of the compliments for. Uh, when we first opened up the place, they had a drop ceiling in here, and I tore that out. 
and uh, re tin. yeah, refinished the original tin, which is uh, you know placed at about 100 years old. Uh, took an extreme amount of scraping and uh, oh acid goodness. to clean everything off, wow. and then painting it blue. Awesome. Uh, yeah, it was a lot of work, but it turned out extremely beautiful. I think. Yeah, um, it would get so a lot of compliments. Reminds me of um, downtown Manhattan, and you know, like uh, you know where actually the original hippies lived. Um, I know you're too young, but anyway, so it was like you know Second Street and First Avenue and Avenue A. They have bars like this or breweries like this. Actually, Brooklyn Beer is down there, I think, and also. Boiling soda or something like that. Anyway, so you should see how packed it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, this skinny space, <laughs> these people pack it in there. Why? Because it's local, people like community um, meetups, and so this has got that feel to it. That's what we were shooting for uh, with the company, is just to give people a place to that's clean, easy going, you know, great customer service, that's extremely important. You know, I know what I like when I go into a place is to be treated well and to have some good quality uh, brew or whatever it is that I'm uh, enjoying, rather it's a cup of coffee or whatnot. And uh, I figured I could provide that for people and it's a great location. So, you know, being the center of town, um, you know, I, I hope people would come and enjoy the space as much as I do. Can we look at your menu and things? Absolutely. So, this is also, there's full pork and chicken that David, the photographer over here, was talking about coming in here and taking a bite. Yeah. Uh, his, uh, he's actually introduced me to a lot of the places here in Charlottesville because he's a, a frequent, he likes to eat, mm -hmm. and he likes to eat good. Yeah. And so he, he t tastes a lot of the uh, restaurants around here. And uh, so, uh, where, where, what do you do? You cook, you get... We have uh, Big B's Barbecue out of uh, Rutgersville. He's a friend of mine, he's also a veteran of our country. Um, he owns a barbecue restaurant, so he caters his food. Um, you know, here at Civilian. Awesome. So I can focus on the beer, which is what I'm passionate about, and he can focus on the barbecue aspect, mm. which is, you know, what he's all about. He's absolutely amazing barbecue. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I've had barbecue all over the place, all over the U.S., and I have to say that it's a really, really good stuff. And so it's you, a no-brainer. You yeah. know what happened in New York City. Like, so they had this place called Dinosaurs opened up in Harlem, and this was in 2000, like, six or five, maybe even four. Anyway, Manhattan, with all the eateries, right? Everything, every kind of cuisine, every international, everything, right? Mm -hmm. Every block in Manhattan now is barbecue. <laughs> Just from this barbecue place that set this whole thing, and they're, they're not good. You know, it's like you go to one place and it's like, huh, are you kidding me? You know, there, there are tons of ways to make you know different styles true. of barbecue, but and you have to have you know good barbecue to yeah. really appreciate it. I think it's really nice. You know, it's it's you know it's it, I always jokingly say it's science. Beer and barbecue together it just makes sense. Uh huh. So, uh -huh. Yeah. Awesome. It's a heck of a marriage. It's true. It's like I actually do that. If I go to a new town or city, I will check out just barbecue or check out just pizza. <laughs> like I'll go there, I'll order slice. I'm like. You know what? Do the next one. This is my pizzeria. Mm -hmm. So barbecue is also on my list. I usually go around, and so it's really good to know that you have good barbecue. We do. It's really good to know. <laughs> so as you were saying, it's the eyebrow. The unibrow. It's unibrow. Called. Unibrow. Yeah. <laughs> Where Charlottesville comes together. <laughs> and so this facade, for instance, what, it's like 300 years old or something? Oh, I, w um, I think the, the earliest that we could place it is, uh, I'm sorry, the latest that we could place it is about like a hundred, a little over a hundred years. So I want to say that it originally, uh, there's like a receipt found for this space and it was a, uh, like a feed store. Yeah. Wow. It has a pretty uh, interesting basement to it that took a lot of work to kind of get it Would back like into shape. Would like books up there and things or no? No, but it was, uh, it was definitely used for like, But like little feet. stalls or something? Or? 
it has like a dusty concrete floor to it oh. and that was impossible to come clean and just like it was it was just interesting it was just really rugged and it needed a lot of tlc well, good for you yeah. good for yeah. you to, to actually get, be brave enough to take on such a um an ominous task you know of, of actually changing up uh repurposing a building and thank you because now we have a nice place <laughs> and you know, um, and that's what a lot of businesses or local are taking responsibility. I think mm -hmm. um, that's what I'm learning from doing these interviews or whatever. And um, and so I was just wondering how that happened. Like for instance, do people come in a canvas like order up and things like that? Do they come here and they sort of ask you to get on board with them, or did you hear about it? Uh, like I was saying earlier, a lot of the stuff that comes to uh, civilian, it's just, you know, just comes in through the front door. You, you never know who you're going to meet. I've met a lot of extremely interesting people and I've had a really good time uh, with it. But yeah, order up, uh, beer lamp, and I try to support as many, uh, you know, local companies as I possibly can in any way that I can. So. And so also I see that you're promoting uh, the Paramount, which they... Um, I guess either they hung up the signage. Yeah, we try to uh, promote as much as the local arts as well. Um, you know, we do. Obviously, uh, with um, Ali Alter. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So yeah. we also do like uh, we'll have live music here on Saturdays, and we also do um, like uh, comedy nights and uh, improv. Uh, has been really good uh, to us. So awesome. pretty excited about that. Awesome. So what, t what are your hours? We're closed on Mondays, uh, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, it's uh, 5 to 10. Um, Thursdays and Fridays, 3 to 11. Saturdays, noon to 11. And then Sundays, 1 to 8. Like I said, with um, uh, uh, Portland, Maine, that's what I mean. Portland, Maine is like a university town too. Yeah. And they, it's street level. So they have those type of uh, venues where you can hear the music, like from the street. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And then you can go from place to place, like you said, the unibrow of, of the and What happens is you can actually go from one place to the next. And it's a total entertainment night. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. That's really awesome. Yeah, I like that about Charlottesville. If you're coming from the university, you know, this is a nice area to grab a bite to eat, maybe have a pint before you head over to the uh, Fridays after five. It's a nice area to break up your, you know, your walk. You know, it's, it literally is the midpoint. So I think it's a, it's a pretty cool spot and it's nice to see, you know, so many new businesses coming up and, and uh, growing in this particular area instead of, you know, just solely like the downtown or, um, or the UVA. And this is rare for a brewery to be right here. You know, Star Hill started in this building. Oh, that's right. Yeah. What so, am I thinking? That's yeah, right. I still have the, my walk-in fridge uh, belonged originally to Star Hill, uh, so that's pretty cool. See? And before then, they there was a, a, another brewery. Uh, I wanted to say it was uh, Blue Ridge Brewery. I know this is several years ago before yeah, they had. Several years ago. But um, I've been here since I had heard it, yeah. But yeah, you're reminding me of everything. I found a niche and that would be woodworking. I used to build houses and stuff before I got injured. It kind of puts me in a, you know, I'm building something that, that I can make. It's like I make uh, fly rod boxes out of uh, uh, reclaimed wood. The woodworking is kind of like, it, it, it's like a blast in my past, you know what I mean? Like, I can do this. I'm from a military family, basically. Everybody was either Marines or, well, hey, I want Marines, I want Army. Within the Army, I've held, I think, five MOSs. Uh, 11 Bravo, I was a truck driver, engineer, chemical guy, and then I went to, I used to instruct at West Point, and then I went to Iraq. I thought there was only two ways to come back from war, in a body bag or hole, you know, I mean, there was no in-between. I mean, for me, there wasn't, but obviously, there is. It started out like every other normal day. We went to Chow, 
I was just getting my silverware and everything. And the next thing I know, it just everything just went, just stopped. I mean, everything just went. And it just was like right there. It just went poof, went black, and just everything just went. There were like 20 phone calls, messages on the machine, and there was one from the just Department of Army. So when they call us, give us a call back, 1-800 number, that was it. So I made dinner, and Ora Marie kept saying, no, I think you need to call them. I had this gut feeling, you need to call them. About the fifth, fourth or fifth time of her saying, you've got to call them. I said, oh, all right, okay. So I called them, and... It was not only trying to get a hold of mom and figure out what had happened, but she was still waiting for information to come in and everything was just kind of up in the air. It was, everything was normal and then all of a sudden you get a phone call and, you know, the stereotypical, everything changed in a heartbeat. Well, his whole body was pretty much a road map of fractures. He had multiple, multiple fractures and surgeries and they reconstructed his leg, the veins, the muscle was all gone, his pelvis, his back. I mean, it, he was just a road map. As soon as I was picked up off that floor in the chow hall, I knew I was going to be all right. You know, I knew that I was only 15 minutes away from anything that ever happened anywhere in the world. Bang, bang, bang. I knew there was people, good people, that was going to take care of me. The attitude, positive attitude, lawn stool, if, if there would have been the other way, it would have went south. But they just, the encouragement and uh, the stuff that really didn't register in my head, it was just their actions, maybe not even their words. Once I touched him and kissed him, he said, yeah, now I know I'm going to walk again. I think my boys came along at a really good point. Um, a lot of people who have injuries and have been overseas and whatever kind of shut down and close off. And I think because of the boys, he's not allowed to do that. You did a good game, man. You are a good goalie. I've seen you running. They keep me so grounded that I don't have to worry about the outside world. I just have to worry about these two guys and what's here. I really don't because they're always asking me interesting questions. You know, any questions from them is interesting because it takes me a few minutes to, yeah, yeah, I can see why. <laughs> All right, yeah. And then I, it, it's like I talk with them. It's not like I'm talking at them or anything. It's like. It's just, it's, it, it's just food for the soul, man. It's just, it makes you feel good about living. You know, life is good, man. It's just what you make of it, you know. To all the doctors and nurses at Landstool, I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for saving my husband and taking good care of him. Just wanted to say thank you for everything that you guys did. Um, because of you, I got my dad home. And because of you, my two sons were able to have their papa. Thank you the to the doctors and nurses at Landstool for all your hard work. Thank you for bringing my dad home. I just want to thank all the doctors in Landstool that, that helped me survive. Without them, I wouldn't have my leg. I wouldn't have my family. I wouldn't have anything. I just want to thank you all. And uh, Godspeed, you know, I, you do great work. Thank you very much. This has chocolate flavor mm -hmm. to it? Yeah, as well as uh, milk, like and, lactose. And say it again, what is it called? It's the uh, Cavalier Chocolate Milk Stout. Okay. Oh my goodness, my next visitation will be here. Absolutely delicious. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So, what is your pride and joy one? Um, right now, uh, this I'll is so say... good. All right, I'll just, just a little bit more. A little, a little bit more. The Paramount Pale is really nice. Mm. People, uh, I'd, I'd say our most popular beer is probably the um, our Citra IPA, and it's I can the way I describe it most uh, mostly is like taking a 
grapefruit and just taking a big bite out of it. Oh. It's really nice. It's uh, very refreshing. It has uh, big tropical notes to it. A lot of fun. Yeah, so really, this, really good. This? That's the pale ale. That's the Paramount Pale. Okay. Mm -hmm. We've been making that since we've uh, since we opened about a year and a half ago. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Light and refreshing, easy going. Mm -hmm. How come I didn't know about this place before? I'm not going anywhere else. First of all, the ambiance, like I said, it reminds me of so many places I've visited and love to hang out. But the beer is really good. This is really awesome. Oh my gosh. You got to like it. Yeah. It's really good. And I don't say that, you know, across the board. Um, so, I've been to other breweries here in um, Scottsville and promoted them, to, you know, um, and they were very successful. But um, certainly I didn't know about you guys, so this is really awesome. Yeah. So, okay, and so a little bit more history. I would like to go the whole way, but I have to, you know, I can't just hang out like I want to. All right, so, but. These are really good. I don't even want to continue this interview. I just want to drink these very nicely. Okay, but I have to continue. And so here, I noticed that you have the bottles for takeout. Yeah, you know? growlers. growlers. Yeah. yeah. So it, essentially, they hold uh, four pints worth of beer. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, so that's awesome. So yeah. what about the um, food? Like, what is your favorite? Uh, barbecue. I love the brisket that we the have brisket. here. brisket? Absolutely awesome. Smoked chicken is great and so oh, is the pulled pork. Man. Yeah. This is so exciting. Yeah. Good, great beer. Great beer. Now, I have to tell you, I discern. Like, sometimes I'm drinking, like, I never had two beers, like, that I said, wow. Mm -hmm. Usually, if I'm drinking a beer and I taste it, it has, like, a little bite to it, it's a little off or something. These are just perfect. Just like you said, you know, it's exactly the description. It took us a, I mean, you know, we've been open a year and a half now and we do small batches here, so we had a lot of learning to do up front, but, um, you know, knock on wood, we've been, uh, we've worked our butts off to perfect our recipes and, um, awesome. you know, yeah, it takes okay, time. So, I want to thank you so much. Awesome. Opening up your heart to the little warriors. Yeah, absolutely. And donating today, as that's what I do on my show. I try to get people to rally for the community. And you already were ahead of the game. Um, first of all, just being able to modify this space for the community. And then having it available. And then having really good beer. And then having really good food. I'm so excited. Uh, but also, I want to thank you so much for your service, sir. Absolutely. And, um... All right. My name is John Johnson, and I'm from Chicago, Illinois. Ever since I could remember, I wanted to be in the military. I was in the Marine Corps for six years. I think I'm just now, in the past about year or two, starting my transition to civilian life, and it's not what I expected at all. Wounded Warrior Project created Warriors to Work because we recognized there was a need to help warriors um, in their transition to the civilian workplace. I really had trouble finding the right job for me before this. I, I didn't keep a job very long, not for lack of effort or my skills, it just, they weren't the right fit. The Warriors to Work program, like any of our other programs, is no cost to warriors and their family members. We have regional specialists across the country who work with warriors where they are regionally. So they work with the warriors and they work on all the skills that they need to become very empowered job seekers. Whether it's resume assistance, uh, LinkedIn profile, building their professional brand, um, helping them to network well with employers, and also interview preparation as well. I had someone to guide me within what I wanted, not to tell me what I wanted, not to tell me what was right, but to make sure when I'm looking at things that I'm really reflecting on them and are these really what I want. One of the major qualities that uh, employers look for is dedication, determination, and a sense of accomplishing your assigned mission. As warriors or as veterans, it's something that's in our fabric. Our program works with them to ensure that they can translate those, um, those military skills to be recognizable to the civilian workplace and also make the civilian workplace more familiar to them. 10, 11, 
and 19 percent. He has things to offer my department that I can't get anywhere else. And the experiences that he has to offer will only make our department better. Usually you know when a job's right for you or not. And I didn't know that until I found a job that was right for me. The job search can be a very uncertain time for warriors. It is maybe their first time into the civilian workplace or it's that second or third opportunity. Uh, we are here for warriors every step of the way and we will ensure that we take some of that uncertainty out. My advice to uh, my fellow veterans out there is, you know, it's something we used to say in the military, Charlie might continue the mission, continue the fight in regards to what your heart is driving you to accomplish. It's always easier to give up, but with Wounded Warrior Project, you don't have to do that. Warriors to Work helped me find a job where I was happy going to work. And it didn't happen overnight, but Wounded Warrior Project's with you throughout all of the steps.